A drummer beats a drum 31 times during a 25 second time interval. This problem asks us to figure out the period and the frequency of the drumming. So the period, which we tend to abbreviate with a capital T, means the time that elapses between beats. You can go ahead and label these variables. So the number of times, that's for numbers, we generally use a lowercase n, and for a total time, we use a lowercase t that we want to be able to distinguish from our capital T for period. So if period is the number, if the amount of time that elapses between beats, I can find the period by taking the total time and splitting it up, dividing it by the number of beats. So if I do 25 divided by 31, I get 0 0.806 seconds. Alright, that makes sense because they're hitting the drum a little more often than once every second, so we should expect a lower number for the period. Alright, frequency, which we use a lowercase f for, is the inverse of period. So if I know the period, I always know the frequency, and vice versa. So I can do 1 divided by the period, and if I do that, I end up with 1.24, and the units are hertz, which means each second. So basically, this drummer is beating the drum 1.24 times every second. Alright, let's take a look at another example. This one says the drummer beats a drum 2.7 times each second. Well, like we talked about in the previous problem, times each second, that is hertz. So what they actually gave us was the frequency. So now, since I have the frequency, I can just use period equals 1 divided by the frequency. So we're doing 1 divided by 2.7, I get 0 0.370. as the period. Alright, next it asks me, how many times would the drummer beat the drum in 60 seconds? So for that time, I want to use a lowercase t. Alright, so if I know they're beating the drum 2.7 times each second, and that lasts for 60 seconds, I can just multiply those two, or to get my total number of times, I'm going to multiply the frequency times the total time interval. Again, think about this conceptually. So if every second I'm beating the drum 2.7 times, then in 2 seconds that would be 5.4 times, just doubling that. And if I beat the drum 2.7 times each second for 60 seconds, that just tells me I should multiply. And I get 162 times, which makes sense because I'm beating it more often than once every second, so I should definitely get a number that's larger than 60. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at defining what a full period means. All right, so this problem says a student releases a pendulum from the position shown. Is the time interval indicated by the arrow a full period? All right, so a full period. To get a full period, we need to, the best way to do it is to meet these cri criteria. We need to start and stop at same location. Also, we need to make sure that we touch both sides. So let's take a look at this. This swings from one side to the other, so it fails our, our test. We don't start and same, stop at the same location. To make this a full period, I would need to not only swing over, but I would also need to swing back. So that would have been a full period. Another way to create a full period would be if we started in the middle, swung to one side, swung back, and then came back to the middle. That's another way to measure a period. Similarly, with a spring system, this is not a full period because we would need to go up and come back down to make a full period. Another way to make a full period would be to start in the middle, touch each side, and come back.